Huda, a light in every home. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All praise due to Allah alone we praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray no one can show him guidance May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters worldwide, welcome to a new edition and as a matter of fact, a special edition of your favorite program, Ask Huda. It gives me the pleasure today to host my best friend, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, all the way from the United States of America. Uh, today, inshallah, Sheikh Yusuf and I will be answering your valuable questions. Sheikh Yusuf will take care of the da'wah questions. <laughs> and we already have loads of those questions, particularly with the reverts. So allow me in the beginning to welcome Sheikh Yusuf to the program. Sheikh Yusuf. Thank Thank it's good to so be with you again. Barakallah fikum. Thank you so much for joining us. May Allah bless you and your effort. And you brothers and sisters. Let me remind you with our phone numbers in the beginning, area code 002 248 or 249. And the email address is still the same ask at huda.tv and it should appear also our Facebook account for those who would like to communicate with us live right now during this program on Facebook. Uh, Sheikh Yusuf, I got a very important question. Uh, one sister from the Philippines is asking about, uh, she's a revert herself and she says that the, the question consists of two parts. One part, inshallah, will be happy to handle and the other part is definitely yours. Since she's a revert, uh, she's been trying to give da'wah to her mom. She loves her mom so much. And as a matter of fact, once I had a lady from the Philippines as well. She called in live and she said she's been following the program. She loves to accept Islam, but she doesn't know what she's going to do with her family members. She loves her mother and her brother, and she thinks that if she accepts Islam, she will have to sever their, uh, her relations with them. So once we explain to her, as a matter of fact, Islam would encourage you to strengthen your relation with your uh, parents and brothers and sisters. She innocently accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah wa shukriya. Now she says that her mother does not seem to accept the whole idea that her daughter accepted Islam. She's resenting that a great deal. And she's furthermore asking her to come back to her senses as she says. So on the other hand, the sister, may Allah keep her steadfast in Islam, uh, is very eager to invite her mother to accept Islam in order to be saved and so on. So she's asking, and the question is uh, for you. What is the best way and method to convince my mother uh, to believe in the oneness of God? Jazakallah khair. And Shaykh, and you're doing a beautiful job with the dawah, mashallah. May Allah accept. I would like to, first of all, encourage everyone to understand the importance of calling people to this right way. It is a duty and it's obligation. But it's an obligation to do it in the best possible way using the hikmah or the wisdom of Islam as well. And we use Prophet Muhammad Wasallam as our role model. And we see that the people around him and how they reacted and they came to Islam. One of his closest companions, his own mother, didn't accept Islam. And he was so upset about it, you know. And he went, finally he asked Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so to nice. make dua for my mother all this time. She never came to Islam. So the Prophet made the dua, and then he went home, and his mother said, don't come in. You know the story. Don't come in, don't come in. He said, why? Don't come in. Okay, so he waited, he waited, you know, and then she said, okay, now you can come in. Why? Because she was taking a bath. Why? She was making a whistle or the ablution you make prior to entering into Islam, and she accepted Islam. This particular lesson showed me personally a lot that as much as you try to convince people, it's still up to Allah. Because the Prophet ﷺ made a beautiful dua for the man's mother, and she accepted Islam. So let us not forget that important ingredient. And of course, the companion was the great companion, Abu Hurairah. May Allah be pleased with him. Jazakallah khair. 
Abdul Rahman bin Sakhar. Correct. That's his name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, I think what uh, one of the Pakistani sheikhs taught me was the point behind all okay, of it. Uh, brothers and sisters, I guess we do have a technical problem. We'll go for a short break and we'll come back momentarily, inshallah. Stay tuned. programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Oh. Europe's forgotten heritage. This is a sad reminder of the past history of the Muslims in the city. Nowadays, there are no Muslims anymore. These are the mosques that have remained. And it is really sad. Wait a second, this is Morocco. No, this is Tunisia, Algeria, North Africa, Egypt. No, this is all Europe, and this is all part of Spain. Islam spread first in Africa, and then from Africa, it came over to Europe, and then it did developing work in Europe. Now, we look the other way around nowadays. The compass was invented by the Muslims. Many important um, um, inventions came from the time of the Muslims on the Iberian Peninsula. Instead of people becoming less in battles, as we normally know, as we know in battles, obviously, people die. But no, what was happening? The Spaniards recognized and realized the superiority of the Muslims and the treatment that the Muslims gave to the Christians and the Jews in Spain at that time, that they happily accepted Islam, many of them. And not over the fountain, as we've seen it before in other places in Greece. Now, it has some Arabic on top, as well as it has some Arabic down where the tap used to be or where the water was coming out your bags, grab your passports and join Dr. Steph Karis as he takes us through Europe and rediscovers Europe's forgotten heritage only on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sheikh Yusuf, you were talking about the best way to approach one's mother mm -hmm. and you mentioned earlier the sharpest weapon and the most effective tool which is dua. seeking the help of Allah yeah. dua and invocation yeah actually one of the sheikhs in Pakistan he taught us something really nice he said think of yourself like a farmer that you're planting seeds in the day and water them at night mm. I didn't quite get it at first but he was saying in the day you give the da'wah the call to Islam and in the night make the Sprouts. dua mm. which is the call to Allah Mm. So in the day you're calling the people to the understand who is God and to do what God wants you to do. Mm. Then at night you pray and ask him to guide him because it's up to him. So one of the things you can do with your mom, first of all you have to remember she raised you up. She looks at you different than you look at other people. Mm. So it's kind of hard for her to accept that you're going to tell her that everything she believed in her whole life is wrong. So what I suggest, if somebody wants to do this, to take the time to take one of our programs. We have a website called What's Islam? What's Islam? They can download the program from right there and then put it on a CD, put a question mark on it. Don't put anything else, just a question mark and say, I have a question, Mom, will you watch this DVD? And when you're done, I'll ask my question. That's it. Great. Called What's Islam? Or they can just watch it online right there. Let her watch it right online. Barakallah fiqh shaykh. The second part of the question, she says that my in-laws are not Muslim. And so when we try to help them financially, they buy haram things, uh, unlawful things, particularly she mentioned like beer. Should we stop helping them? That's uh, for you. Yeah, the, the Quran dealt with this uh, matter in, in, in a couple of chapters, Al-Ankabud, then Luqman. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Luqman ordered us to be good and youthful to our parents. Mm -hmm. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا uh, we know that the Quran orders the command 
to believe in the oneness of Allah and second to that is to be good to one's parents whether Muslims or non-Muslims believers or non-believers but without condition وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطَعْهُمَا But if they struggle with you, if they make effort to hinder you from the path of Allah, to make you sit partners to Allah in worship, فَلَا تُطَعْهُمَا So obey them not. Obey them not in this particular command. But it doesn't mean that you should sever relations with them, mm -hmm. even though they are non-Muslims and they're struggling to convert you. وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَا and give them a good company in the dunya. So supporting your uh, parents financially, if, if you have the means, and if they are in need, similarly, brothers and sisters, even if they are non-Muslims, is a duty, mm -hmm. with one condition, that you know that this money will be spent to buy them the lawful things. So if you know that they're going to party or uh, buy beer or wine or drugs with that, of course, it won't be permissible. So the solution will be, for instance, if they're living in a rental property, you pay them the rent. Yeah. The support will be towards the rent. With the food. The food. You deposit some money in the store and say, this is towards particular food, like the welfare program, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Where you cannot buy cigarettes, no <coughs> beer with mm -hmm. that. That's true. So this is a solution. But look at the balance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most patient one. Mm -hmm. Even though these guys disbelieve in him, and they ordered their son or daughter to disbelieve in God as well, Allah does not want to sever, does not want him or her to sever their relations with their family members and with their parents. Rather, he orders him to maintain it, but with a certain limit. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have many callers. Brother Muhammad from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad, and welcome to Ask Quda. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Muhammad. I hear you. Present your question, please. Uh, I have one question about the perfume, which is included uh, alcohol. So alcohol is impure. Uh, in, impure. If you spray on the body uh, for the cloth, alcohol. So I, I mean to say, our prayer also will be unacceptable. Is it right? Well, I didn't understand the question, though. Uh, if you can call yeah, from a better line, Sheikh Yusuf, did you get it? He's asking about the funeral prayer. But what is the question exactly? I couldn't grasp it. I think if he calls back, it might be better. Okay. Please, Muhammad, for the sake of time, try again. And Sister Asiya from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Asiya. How about y'all both the sheikhs? Great, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all and your family. Uh, I just, uh, can I talk to Sheikh Yusuf Eskis? Uh, absolutely, Sheikh? absolutely. Yeah. You talk to us all the time and he's all yours. Yeah, uh, Sheikh, uh, mashallah, it was a very happy moment when I met your w uh, wife, um, Sister Khadija, in uh, Islamic Culture Center in Jeddah. And I wish I could meet, uh, uh, and your daughter was also there, and Alhamdulillah, it was a very pleasant occasion. And Alhamdulillah, we, uh, just what I pray that we, Inshallah, will meet uh, you also, Sheikh Salah, and Sheikh Salah's wife also, Inshallah, in future. Thank and, you so uh, much for that, I, sister. We highly and, appreciate and, uh, that. Yeah, and I have some, I have sent a small gift for uh, uh, your Islam channel and for Huda channel. MashaAllah, uh, uh, that's wonderful. He, yeah, I, I think so. She will, uh, I think so, inshallah. I, I mean, she but I've told you, but uh, she did, um, I'm the sister Asiya, that the same person. So, Jazakallah, please pray for us and uh, may Allah keep all of you all happy. Uh, inshallah, I will uh, ask the question in next uh, Ask Khuda. I will give other people chance. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, I like that Thank kind of so color. <laughs> That's great. I guess she wanted to make sure to mention that you're married and you have kids. Okay, she made a point though. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Isan from Bahrain, Salaam Alaikum. Isan, Salaam Alaikum and welcome yeah. to Ask Khuda. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate your show. So I have four questions. Okay. Please. 
first one uh, regarding braces for teeth. My sister has removed both teeth, two from up and two from down. And then the doctor kept braces for her. Her teeth were overlapping, they were one on other. So the doctor advised her to do this, but now she worried and wants to know is it haram what she did. And my second question is, a lady has very thin eyebrows and that too covering only half of her eye. So she used eyebrow pencil to complete it and to look like a little darker. Is it also haram or allowed in Islam? Okay, next question. Okay, طيب. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you, Assam. Brother Muhammad from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, I live in a small town and I have to travel almost 55 miles to go to work five days a week. So for those five days, I have to pray Johor in my workplace. So what should I do? Should I pray four raka or two raka? That is my question. So the, the, the question is pertaining praying at the place of your work, which is 65 miles away from your home, right? Yes. Okay. This distance allows you to shorten the prayer according to the vast majority of uh, the jurists. Uh, even if you travel back and forth every day. So you're allowed to not just shorten the dhuhr into two rak'ahs instead of four, but you can combine asr as well along with it. Because by the time you return back, it may be asr time already, or you may pass the time. So you're allowed to pray dhuhr, then make iqama and pray two rak'ahs for asr as well. Barakallah feek. Thank you, Muhammad. Sister Aisha from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Okay, I hope the questions are for the Sheikh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, first, first one is uh, I went to Makkah for Umrah, mm -hmm. uh, but I did, not, did only Tawaf and come back. It, um, it happened two times with me. You didn't do the Sa'i yet? Yes, yes. Uh, due to some reasons, we can, cannot um, complete it. Why not? Uh, when I cook, uh, first time I have very uh, headache. Uh, uh, my, my, I have some problem. I, in, 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 I have some uh, headache problem. And second time, uh, 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 due to some reasons, we, uh, we cannot complete. Uh, what is the ruling about it? Okay. And second one is, uh, can we recite the Quran uh, without uh, wazu, without uh, ablation? Okay. With regards to your first question, the Umrah, the only act of worship which if you uh, commence into it or you start it, even if it is a voluntary act of worship, not the mandatory part, you must continue, you must finish it up or you have to make it up some other time is Umrah and Hajj. So if somebody went for a voluntary Umrah and said Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik and then get to continue, we'll talk about the procedures, how to make it up. But this act, once you start it, even though it was voluntary, it becomes mandatory to finish it. If you didn't finish it, you have to make it up, exactly like the Fard. This is pertaining the Hajj and Umrah. This is not the case pertaining fasting, voluntary fasting, or offering the prayers, voluntary prayer. So now, uh, if there was a necessity or something that out of your control forced you to step out of Mecca and you just did the tawaf and did not complete it, so you have to offer a fidya, a sacrifice, uh, a ransom, and meanwhile, you shave, or I'm sorry, you trim your hair. This is shaving will be for men, per, recommended more than trimming. And you trim your hair, you take only the length of a fingertip from the, the, the end of your hair. And then you have to come up with another umrah 
once you feel better or you're able to. You said you've done that twice, you owe two umrah though and two ransoms. If somebody is planning to perform hajj or umrah and they know that they're physically ill or they have some chronic ailment which may not enable them to continue or finish up their manasik, then it is recommended for them to do and to say what the Prophet ﷺ recommended for one of his lady companions. He said, لَبَّيْكَ <coughs> اللَّهُمَّ Whether hajj or umrah. Here I count you Allah to perform other hajj or umrah. وَإِنْ حَبَسْتَنِي And if you withhold me from continuing the manasik, فَمَحِلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي Then I'm allowed to do tahallul, to undo the ihram and exit from the condition of ihram simply at the same place without any uh, commitment. So this is an advice for those, and of course we'll discuss this in details in the program of Hajj uh, step by step. Barakallahu feekum. And as far as reading the Qur'an without wudu, it is permissible to read the Qur'an without wudu, but it is recommended to have wudu or tahara uh, at the time of reading Qur'an or making dhikr and throughout the entire time. Only touching the Quran with the wudu is a point of difference between the scholars. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from Nigeria. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, the two sheikhs. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Muhammad. How are you? I'm fine, sir. I want to ask some questions. Uh, my, first, my first question is uh, when do we stop raising the arms? For the funeral prayer, mm. you know, sometimes in Mecca, when people will be raising Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and some will be raising their hands, and some will just raise their hands at the first instance, and then they stop. What I do see. we do? What's the correct way? Okay. Then the second question. The second question is the hudubah of Friday prayers. When I come into the mosque, uh, when the hudubah is going on, can I pray the two nafil or not? They arrive while the Imam is giving the speech, right? Yes, but he is giving it in Arabic and I cannot understand it. Okay, because he's giving in Arabic, so he arrive late, right? Yes, I, I arrive late, yes. <laughs> okay. And then um, the last question is, uh, can I pray... I'm glad you didn't skip it entirely. Yes, the last question. Okay. Uh, can I pray inside an aircraft? Where will I face? Like if I'm leaving uh, Nigeria to America. Okay. And the aircraft is, is not facing Mecca. Of course, it does not necessarily have to face Mecca or you'll end up in Jeddah. <laughs> right? Okay. Taib, I'll answer you, inshallah, right now. But I have to take a few more calls. Uh, people are waiting on the line. Uh, Farheen from United Arab Emirates, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Huda. Wa alaikum salam Sheikh, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah wa shukla, thank you for asking. Uh, Sheikh, I have two questions. Please. Uh, is it permissible to write the uh, Ayatul Kursi or any other ayat on a plate with zamzam and saffron and then drink it for shifa from any disease? Okay. And uh, can we write down Allah's names in the same manner? Okay. And second one, are men allowed to wear silver or platinum rings with diamond? Okay. That's all. Okay. Thank you for hearing from United Arab Emirates. Barakallah Fiq. Okay. Okay. Let's take a break just from the phone calls to answer those pending questions. Inshallah, then we'll resume. Uh, Muhammad from Nigeria with regards to the funeral prayer. Funeral prayer itself is fardu kifaya. It, what does it mean? It's a communal uh, duty. If a group of Muslims offer the funeral prayer for a deceased, it is sufficient. But every Muslim is encouraged to attend the funeral prayer if they know that there is a funeral prayer. Because the Prophet ﷺ has said, the reward for attending the funeral prayer is similar to a reward is similar to inside the mountain of Uhud. And Qirat. And similarly, there is a similar word for following the funeral for men until the graveyard, until the burial process is over. With regards to the procedures of praying the funeral prayer, there are some hayat 
the pillars of the funeral prayer that you have four takbir, the beginning takbir and the following three takbirat while standing. After the first takbir, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, and after the second takbir, you recite the last part of the Jewish Sharif, beginning with Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad to the end of uh, at tashahud similar to what we do in uh, the prayer. After the third takbir, you make dua and supplicate for the deceased. Ask Allah to have mercy on him or her and uh, accept your intercession for them to take them to paradise, to part them, etc. And there is a uh, recommended dua in this regard. Then after the fourth takbir, you pray for yourself and all Muslims. And it's a short period of time after the fourth takbir and that's why normally after the imam says Allahu Akbar the fourth time he's ready to make a taslim sometimes as in the haram makes taslim only to the right and sometimes both right and left because it's both prescribed different of opinions based on different narrations similarly with regards to raising the hands there are different opinions but the vast majority of the jurists shows that it is recommended to raise both hands with each takbir, but not raise your voice. What's very common as an error, that people raise their voices, they think it's similar to the Eid prayer. The Eid takbirat, the first and the second rak'ah, seven in the first, five in the second, it is recommended for men to raise their voice and to make the takbirat out loud, not in the funeral prayer. Everybody should be quiet and uh, silent. As far as attending the Jumu'ah, whether you understand the language in which the uh, speaker, the khatib, is given the sermon or not, you got to understand that the angels stand by the door of every masjid in order to write down the names of those who attend early. And once the imam climbs the member and says, Assalamu alaikum, they fold the records and they enter the masjid to attend the speech. Even if it is in any language other than yours, there must be a verse of the Quran, a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, so you should make sure they attend the prayer from the beginning, because if you do, it's a major sin, even if you don't understand it. Because as I said, the khutbah consists mainly of an advice or an admonition to keep your duty to Allah, to fear Allah, uh, to love Allah and His Messenger, to quote an ayah, and a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And basically, these are the main components of the khutbah. What if you enter while the khatib or the imam is giving uh, the khutbah for a reason or another? The delay was for a reason or another. Should you offer the greeting of the masjid, the hayatul masjid, the two rak'ahs, that will be answered, inshallah, after the short break. So stay tuned. viewers. Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Oh. Europe's Forgotten Heritage This is a sad reminder of the past history of the Muslims in the city. Nowadays, there are no Muslims anymore. These are the mosques that have remained. And it is really sad. Wait a second. This is Morocco. No. This is Tunisia. Algeria. North Africa. Egypt. No. This is all Europe. And this is all part of Spain. Islam spread first in Africa, and then from Africa, it came over to Europe, and then it did developing work in Europe. Now, we look the other way around nowadays. The compass was invented by the Muslims. Many important um, um, inventions came from the time of the Muslims on the Iberian Peninsula. Instead of people becoming less in battles, as we normally know, as we, we know in battles obviously people die, but no, what was happening? The Spaniards recognized and realized the superiority of the Muslims and the treatment that the Muslims gave to the Christians and the Jews in Spain at that time, that they happily accepted Islam, many of them. 
and not over the fountain, as we've seen it before in other places in Greece. Now, it has some Arabic on top, as well as it has some Arabic down where the tap used to be, or where the water was coming out. Pack your bags, grab your passports, and join Dr. Stef Keris as he takes us through Europe and rediscovers Europe's forgotten heritage, only on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, thank you, Sheikh Yusuf, for joining us live today. Uh, Brother Mohammed from Nigeria said that he uh, comes late deliberately for Jumu'ah because uh, Khatib gives a khutbah in Arabic and he won't understand it. So he says if he attends, we explain to him that you should make sure to attend earlier uh, in order to get the reward of attending the Jumu'ah. Tell him what the reward is and he'll never miss it. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, in addition to it's not only about the reward, it's if you, if you miss it deliberately, it's a big sum. Yeah, so but what about the reward? Nah. Well, if you attend earlier, because the Prophet ﷺ says, the one who attend in the first hour is like the one who offered a camel. In the second hour, like a, a cow, then a sheep, then a hen, and so on. Don't so forget the, the egg. <laughs> yeah, right before... Uh, That's me, I'm in the egg category. <laughs> so what's really important is to make sure that you be there before the khatib attends uh, the khutbah or climbs the member. If now, he intentionally, Sheikh, look, if he intentionally doesn't go until he just catches the rakat mm -hmm. to pray, uh, thinking he got the juma, what he got is maybe salah, but he missed the juma. The whole point of the juma is what? To please Allah. And what's the bonus? Every sin from the previous week. Absolutely. That's why I want you to tell him. Tell him, tell him. In the Sarah Hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Salawatu al Khams, Wal Jumuatu il al Jumuati, Kafaratu Lima Bainahuna, Majduni Batil Kabair. Of course, so uh, there is another narration in which it mentions the Umrah to another Umrah and so on. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in this Hadith, the part which concerns us, uh, Friday to next Friday, the person who attends Friday properly from beginning to end, Friday sermon and Jumu'ah, and attends the following one, it will be an expiation for the sins which were committed in between. That refers to the minor sins, not the major sins. The major sins will require a special tab. Now the, his question was, if you enter the masjid and the khatib um, is given the khutbah. Mm -hmm. There is a hadith in uh, the sound collection of Imam al-Bukhari, in which he says that somebody entered the masjid once and the Prophet ﷺ was given the Friday sermon. And so he was like, sat down. And he sat down. So he asked him, did you pray? He said, no. He said, get up and pray. So he got up and prayed. And he said it in the khutbah to him. Correct. And this is a very straightforward proof that even if you enter late while the Imam is giving the khutbah, you should offer the greeting of the masjid. Quickly, of course, should be two light rakas. Some people said, no, 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 he meant to tell him to point out to the poverty of this guy because he was so poor, so he wanted to expose his poverty. People would donate to him, which was true. But guess what? Next Friday, the same guy came, and he came late. And he had already many donations now. He was wearing a nice outfit, and he had extra. And he sat down. The Prophet ﷺ addressed him once again, and this is collected by Imam Bukhari. He said, have you prayed yet? He said, no. He said, get up and pray. So this is an indication that Tahiyyatul Masjid is an emphatic Sunnah. Even if you sit down, you get up and you pray it. And that's why the, 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 the scholars said, even during the times in which it is disliked to pray, such as after Fajr until sunrise, and after Asr until sunset, when you enter the Masjid, you should still offer the greeting. And also when the sun is straight up over us. Correct. 15-20 uh, minutes before uh, Dhuhr. Hassan from Bahrain, I uh, got hold of a few of his questions. Um, his sister or one of his family members has uh, overlapping in her teeth. And basically is asking about the braces. Absolutely permissible. Because as I was sitting yesterday, you and I remember that we sat with the, with the most famous cosmetic yes. surgeon in the region. That's true. MashaAllah, we discussed some very, very interesting uh, uh, subjects. 
uh, especially about the cleft palate exactly. when they have that division that's right mm -hmm. here when they're not able to speak the properly. The word cosmetic surgery sometimes is misunderstood. It's like, you know, to enlarge certain body parts or reduce certain body parts or whatever. No, not necessarily. <coughs> to restore the original <coughs> image after burn accidents, yes, true. Or, you know, true. and the lips, as you just said. So for wearing braces in order to fix the teeth for an overbite, overlapping, that's permissible. But check this out. Mm. I was with one of the dentists, a Muslim dentist, mm. and he's advertising that he can close the gap between the teeth. Oh. And I went to him and I said, do you know this is the way of Muhammad Sallallahu he had this gap between his teeth? Oh. You wish you would have that. Why are you closing this gap? He said, make money. <laughs> make money. As a matter of fact, the hadith, which is narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that the Prophet Sallallahu forbids that. Well, mutafallijati lil filing the teeth and making gaps. If you were not born with this naturally, you're not allowed to do it for the purpose of beautification. For medical reasons, then it is permissible. Ridwan from United Arab Emirates, Salaamu Alaikum and welcome to the program. Ridwan. Okay. Wa Alaikum wa Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I have four questions. If you permit me, I will ask you. I'm sorry? I have four questions. If you four me, questions. Like we'll take two. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first question, is it allowed to use sanitizer which contains alcohol as this is very commonly used by the school children before they eat in the school? Okay. Uh, second question, is it compulsory by the woman to cover the head before entering into the toilets or bathroom? To cover their head before going yeah. to the toilet. Okay. Okay. Uh, the third question is, uh, is uh, only said two. Yeah, that was two. I heard two. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, Rudwan, because a lot of callers are waiting and no, we already no, have okay, something. Okay, okay. Jazakallah khair. Please, inshallah, maybe next Mashallah. time. Mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Um, okay, Asma from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I have two questions. And my first question. And my first question is, I have a friend who is a convert and she is about getting married. And I explained to her that she has to like perform the Istabra'i before she gets married. We want to be sure if she is to perform the Istabra'i before or after the marriage. Did she have a relation before recently? Hello? Can you hear me? Did she have a relation? Was she involved in a, in a sexual relations? Whether uh, yes. legitimately or outside marriage? Yes. Okay. Outside marriage. So we want to know if she's to perform Istabra'i before the marriage or after the marriage. Of course, before the marriage. And I will explain what yes. Istabra is for the viewers. Okay, next question, please, Asma. Okay, and my second question is what is the punishment for those who involve themselves in lesbianism and gay sexual intercourse? Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, praying in the plane, in an aircraft, if you're flying. Look, uh, the ibadah which no one is exempt from is salat. Is salat. Only women during the menses, obviously. But even if the person is lying on his deathbed or her deathbed, they should pray. Mm -hmm. The Prophet said, Salli qa'iman. You should offer the prayer while standing. As one of the pillars of a salah is standing, then bound down, then prostration. What if you can't? Then while sitting down. What if you can't? Laying then while down. lying down. What if you can't? Even Laying by your eyes. eyelids, even by your heart. But you must pray to keep that connection between you and your creator. What if you are in the plane? He's flying from Nigeria to the USA. We're talking about between you 10 and to 12 hours. You and I are flying all the time. We know full well about that. <laughs> we live in and the, if you stand up the where they got the seatbelt sign on <laughs> and you're a Muslim dressed like this, you're, you're already in trouble just for standing up. Yeah. Uh, in, in the past, it was easy when I would ask the intendant that I would like to offer my prayer and I'm a Muslim and he will direct me to if there is a little room where I can combine my prayers and so on. Mm -hmm. And even the, the, the captain would direct me to the Qibla. If it is accessible, then you should do that. If it is not accessible, then you may pray in your seat and face in the direction of the plane if it is impossible to face the Qibla. If the Qibla is a little bit tilted towards the right or the left, then you should face the Qibla. The hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ was reported as praying on the back of his mount, the camel back then, and facing whichever direction it was facing is pertaining the voluntary prayer. 
night prayer, nawafil, tahajjud, and the hadith, it's also collected by Imam Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported as, and whenever it was the maktubah, the ordained prayer, the fard, he would dismount, disembark, face the qibla, stand up and pray. If you are hanging between the sky and the earth, and there is no way that you can stand <laughs> up, a person like me, I cannot stand up in the plane. So it's not possible. But there are people who can stand. So you stand, but you make ruku and sujood in your seat. You see? So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Keep your duty to Allah as much as you can. If it is not possible, then pray in your seat and facing whichever direction the, the plane is facing. Saba from Canada. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And salam alaikum uh, to Sheikh Yusuf Estes as well. Uh, salam alaikum. But brother, I have a question. Please. Is that there is a new consumer, I don't know if they have been long, but I have become aware of it recently called Muslim Consumer Group, and they are from United States. And basically what they do is they check out foods which are halal and haram. But uh, it's easy, like always said by the Prophet ﷺ, that you know, halal is easy and haram is the, the in-between, which is the one which is a problem for us like to know. So we recently found out that some of the companies, they make products, they initially, when they start the product, they use a little alcohol in it, like maybe 0.3% or something. Mm -hmm. But when the, due to the baking or processing, when the final product comes out, there is no alcohol in it. So as a rule by the government or FDA, they are not supposed to put it in the ingredient list. Now they said to us that certain products, they gave us a list, and he said, if you're using that, just call the company and ask them. So I would like to know that uh, I asked one of the local people, and they said that, you know, it's okay to use it, but um, if, if the final product okay, does Sister not Sister Saba, if it is 0.3% and it evaporates, it is lawful to consume that. And my advice to you is, uh, there is a specialist, our friend Dr. Ahmad Saq, have authored many books on that with regards to food components, with regards to lawful and unlawful. Because some people who are non-specialists make a big deal out of certain things like Brunei and so on. And they even sometimes our speculations, they say this is haram. Why? Because it's better to avoid it without knowing whether it is uh, sensitized yeah. in the lab or coming as an enzyme it's a, it's from the It's a safe pig. call to say haram and stay away from it. There's yeah. no, no doubt. And our scholars say, the easiest is to say haram. Everybody can say haram, but not everybody can say halal. So uh, I recommend uh, you to read uh, this book. And if this committee have scientists, biochemists, not just shuyukh, because uh, the Prophet Sallallahu ordered us to resort to the specialists. And this is what the Quran says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you ask a sheikh about Rini, if you ask a sheikh about certain enzymes and he didn't have a chance to study enzymes hormones blah 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 so he may say haram or halal unknowingly yeah. the other day i heard somebody was saying yes yeah. uh, i attended the program uh, it was in arabic though and the kushner a poor kushner was saying uh, asking about the obsessive compulsive disorder he said there is no such thing <gasps> Why? Because he said the shaitan has no authority. It's not about Satan. It's a, a disorder that needs to be uh, treated medically. Not everything is a mess in Satan's and jinn. <laughs> so uh, I would say if this committee have amongst its board members scientists, they will better tell us because it's not really possible to tell everybody you have to call the 800 number. There are certain things <laughs> which we've called many times and we figured out. The most famous multivitamins and very effective syndrome, we called and said, what about gelatin? They say, yes, yeah, from pork. Initially, they said, well, it's, we cannot confirm because it comes from an independent source. So you call the other company and say it comes 50-50. It comes from beef, sheep, and pig. We cannot determine. So you have to avoid that, and we spoke about that. That's why, please, his books are very uh, interesting because he's a biochemist too. So I recommend to read uh, the books of Dr. Ahmad Sakhr in this regard. Thank you, Sister Saba. Barakallah fikum. Malik from Qatar. Wa alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
I have two questions. One is uh, from my son and one for me. Uh, my son Bilal, his question is, uh, keeping a beard is compulsory. Uh, and uh, because he says in Quran, Allah says, Ati Allah and Ati Rasul, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has asked us to keep the beard. Mm. But he is, uh, his mother, my wife, <laughs> she feels that he doesn't look nice because he's 19 year old. His question to you is, should he obey mother or should he obey Prophet Sallallahu What about oh. you, him and mother obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's a win-win game. What do you think? Uh, I am I'm sure he has to obey Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And the mother but, uh, too? His mother is also watching the TV now at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Imagine, no, sister, think. sister, uh, sister, Mrs. Malik, imagine if the Prophet ﷺ was alive today and he came to visit you guys. He walked in and said, mm. how are you, everybody? Mm. And uh, your son says, oh, Prophet of Allah, my mother says, do not obey the Prophet. Oof. I'm not going to speak about whether it's compulsory or an emphatic sunnah or not. Just imagine if he says that, I want to resemble you. I want to be like you. But my mother says, no. What do you think? It's a big thing, right? So you got the answer. Malik, any other questions? Okay, Barakallah Fiqh. We, uh, we ran out of time. Um, okay, Asma from Nigeria with regards to al a revert. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal muhsanatu min alladheena utul kitaba min qablikum, and he allowed Muslim men to marry, not just women of the people of the books, Jews and Christians, no. A very important condition. And this condition is still also with regards to Muslim women. Al-Muhsanat. He said, Al-Muhsanatu min al-Mu'minat. Wal-Muhsanatu min al-Ladina. Utu al-Kitaba min qablikum. Muhsanat means chast. A woman who did not have the previous relations, outside marriage relationship. Sexual relations with me. So if she accepted Islam and she repented, that will wipe out and erase all the previous sins. From birth but she has to go to Islam to do it. Yes. Now when she accepted Islam, and she recognized that outside marriage relationship is known as adultery. That's in Islam, in Judaism, in Christianity. True. So she repented. Okay, but guess what? Just last week she had a boyfriend. She broke up with him. And now she accepted Islam. Can she just get married right away? No. There's something called al-istibra. To make sure that the woman is free from any pregnancies. She's not pregnant. She did not conceive. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The divorced women, they should wait for a certain time before they get married again, mm -hmm. which is three periods. The three periods, the, the scholars differ whether it means three months or yeah. three ministerial uh, cycles. Exactly. Um, well, unfortunately, the director has been telling me that we... Uh, went over time and we have to uh, we came to the end of today's edition anyway so hopefully inshallah in the next uh, program I will answer those pending questions Jazakumullah khairan Sheikh Yusuf thank you so much for joining us may Allah bless you and your family exactly appreciate like it coming yeah. all the way from the US Barakallah fikum and you brothers and sisters out there may Allah bless you all wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi salam and see you inshallah very soon Allah is my heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate.